This video will give you an overview of Base Manager and help you understand how it can help you better manage your irrigation system. Begin by opening up a web browser and going to baselineapps.net. If you haven't created an account yet, stop. That's covered in another video. Log into your account with your unique username and password, and then look for the Base Manager icon on the left side of the screen. There are three distinct views under Maps, Company View, Current Site, and Current Controller. Company View can show you all the sites that you manage across a city, a state, or the entire country. Current Site brings us down to a different level. Notice that on the previous view, I had it set to Street Map, and on Current Site, I changed it to an Aerial View. There are two ways to get to the Current Controller. One way is to click on the Controller icon on the map, or I can click on the Maps and then Current Controller. With that open, we can see any zones and devices that I've already set up. On any of the maps, I can adjust the levels by clicking Edit and then Panning or Zooming. Once I'm done, I'll save that. I can click on a zone marker and manually operate it by clicking Start. The default time is set for 10 minutes, but I'm going to change it to 5 minutes before clicking Start. Notice that the icon changed from green or idle to blue, which means watering. Selecting Zone 11, I can test it and get information about the solenoid voltage, the solenoid current, and the two-wire voltage drop. I can learn the flow, or I can chart the moisture content if there's a connected soil moisture sensor. Coming back to Zone 3, it's still running, but since I don't want it to water any longer, I'll set it to Done. This works well if a zone is paused and I decide I don't need it to resume watering again later. Clicking on Zone 27, I can see that it's in Program 1 and scheduled to run for 45 minutes. On the Quick View tab, I have as much control as I had on the map, but with additional information. Like before, I can start a zone, test it, learn flow, or chart moisture content. We also get good information about all the different programs and their status. We can see which zones are in Program 3 and their run times. Notice that Program 8 is gray, which means it's disabled and not scheduled to run. This program is only used seasonally, and it's not required right now. Scroll lower, and we can see the master valves and their status, the control points, and the main lines. Apparently, I have some messages on my control point and on my main line. We'll have to look at that in the messages. Here I see high priority, mid priority, and low priority messages. Here's a high priority message about a flow by coder that wasn't able to communicate, maybe a splice or a wire problem. I can also go through and delete certain messages from this screen too. The schedules tab shows all my programs. I see that programs one through six are green or in the idle state, but program eight is not enabled. Opening up program two, I'll click edit to make some changes. I can change the program description if needed, I can assign soil moisture sensors. I can change the watering mode and all other zone parameters. A little bit lower are the start times and start days. At the Devices tab, I can view all the sensors and devices attached to my system. Opening up Zones, I see all the zones in my system and the programs that they're associated with. Did you notice that Zone 9 is not in a particular program? I hope that's intentional. I can also see that Zone 8 is in Program 3 and in Program 8. This is where I can make initial zone assignments or I can make zone reassignments. It's even simpler here when compared to working at the controller. I'll just click on the serial number drop down and unassign a zone. I can assign it to any serial number in that drop down menu. I can add or change the zone descriptions to help me in the field. These descriptions carry over to the controller once they're saved and synchronized. The Flow Setup tab has three parts, water sources, control points, and main lines. Here are the two water sources on my site. This first water source is named, set to priority two, and is assigned to control point one. If I want a monthly water budget or to shut it down when it reaches that budget, this is where I'd set it up. Control points are the next part, and there are two control points on my system. Clicking Edit allows me to make changes like mainline assignment. I can set up some important flow parameters like design flow, high flow limit, and an unscheduled flow limit. Here are the devices associated with this control point, the flow sensor, master valve, pump bicoder, or pressure bicoder. 
It all depends what's actually connected out in the field. Main lines are the next on the flow setup menu with two different main lines on my system. I can tell that zones 1 through 56 are assigned to main line 1. Opening main line 1 and clicking edit allows me to make the changes. I can change the design flow for the main line, which I'll set to 120 GPM, and then I'll select Manage by Flow to allow the controllers to maximize the number of valves running up to that 120 GPM limit. I can change the flow stabilization time and allow additional time for my pipe fill before taking readings. I can adjust my flow variance limit or use advanced flow variance, which gives me more range. The Zone Assignments menu will show Learn Flow in the Design Flow column once I've learned flow. If you can't learn flow, you can manually input the design flow for each zone. It's a slow process, but it's a good workaround if you don't have a flow sensor. The last section of Base Manager to look at is Live View. Right now, this is exactly what my controller screen looks like. Live View is similar to standing in front of the controller, but just doing it virtually through button pushes instead of rotating a dial. You'll find that Live View is not a good substitution for Base Manager as it can be quite slow, but it's helpful if the baseline support team needs to help you remotely. You could be standing at your controller while they navigate through the screens all in real time. With Base Manager, you can make almost every change that you can do while standing at the controller, but with the convenience of being remote and not needing to be on site.